Okay, um, so the starter went out in my Mazda. And so I shop around and I find the best prices on eBay. Um, I order a starter that looks exactly like the original. This is the original. And the pictures. They showed pictures of, of all the angles of the, of, the, um, all, of the starter. And key points are that tab there is the starter signal. It's a blade connection. And the orientation of these um, two posts are, are horizontal, not vertical. So I wanted to get as close to the exact part as I could, a brand new one. I wanted a new starter, not a rebuilt. Uh, and um, I did it based on the pictures and, and price. All right, this is what was shipped to me. It is not exactly the same. The signal is on the side instead of on the top. It is not a blade, it is a lug. And these guys are, are vertical and not horizontal. When you compare the two side by side, they look similar in dimension. So I'm gonna line up these edges, but notice the teeth. Okay, you line them up. So the dimensions are different. The teeth on the new one extend, oh, maybe a half inch out further than the original. I don't know if that's a problem or not. I'm being told it's not, but I'm skeptical. The original had a foam um, sound absorption or moisture absorption, something um, seal there. The new one does not have that seal. The new one has an external support rod keeping it together whereas I guess this is done internally I don't know if there's going to be a problem with that obstruction you know preventing it from being mounted cleanly all right so if I'm going to install this I've got to overcome first of all how am I going to connect the starter uh, signal to this well come up with this idea I'm going to take I've taken two of these okay and I've created and I've I've taken off the installation and I've soldered together like that so I will be installing this on here to give me the same type of blade connection as this old starter has right right there that blade connection okay one thing I noticed from the original pieces is this hole is very small compared to the starter so the first thing I did was I drilled that hole out bigger so that um, the keeper will fit in the hole and keep this from coming off from vibration the, the wire connection so if you're gonna, if you ever get a job like this, you may attempt this. Um, I will make another video after it's installed, letting you know how it goes. But that's my solution to hooking up the, um, the starter. Okay, getting the starter out of the car took me about two hours, maybe longer, because I couldn't see where I was, you know, where the bolts were and stuff. So. First thing you got to do, really, not the first thing, but I figured it out eventually, is you need to remove the fan, radiator fan. Um, it's not even bolted in, it's just snapped in. So there's two, two rubber snaps on top that go in these holes like this, and then this piece sits in a shelf that's mounted to the frame of the car. So you pull, you pull these two pieces out, you unplug these two connectors here, uh, actually, I didn't need to unplug that one, but just the one connector then, and uh, remove the assembly from the bottom. Once you do that, you're going to have more clearance, quite a bit more clearance. It makes it a lot easier. You can actually start seeing the starter. Without it, you can't see the starter. It's obscured. Another thing you'll need to remove is the splash guard. If you have the, the full engine splash guard, it has to come off too, but my car only has the, the guard underneath the radiator, so it came off. All right, so one thing that's mounted to the starter is a bracket, a, a bracket that has a, a ground wire connection and also harnesses snap into it. I, I'm sorry you can't see it from this picture, but basically um, there's two nuts. There's two, two stud bolts. I'm going to call them stud bolts. Okay, and there's two stud bolts like this that hold the starter to the engine. You've got to remove the nuts that's on the stud first and that these nuts on each of these secure the bracket that goes across the top of the starter holding the wiring in place so remove those I think they're 12 millimeter 
and then the um, the bigger uh, the the stud head is 14 millimeter. So you remove that, you get that bracket out of the way, then you remove those. But you got to get the wiring off of the starter um, as well, and it's one nut for the power, and it's that little blade thing. And if you've never if the blade has never been removed before, it's not just going to slide off. You're going to have to get a ice pick or something and push the tab through the metal so that the blade will clear. I sat there and pulled and pulled on it because I saw another video where he goes, oh yeah, you just take the plastic thing off, the plastic keeper off, and it comes right off. Now, there's, there's also a metal retaining thing if it's never been removed before. Well, that's it. I'm just about ready to try to put that starter in. I'm not, I'm not got high hopes about this. There's just too many differences, but I'm going to give it a shot, and I will let you know how it goes. I hope this video helps you.